In this video, I'm going to take a Milwaukee M18 Fuel Model 2853-20 quarter inch hex impact driver, disassemble it, remove the quarter inch hex anvil, make some modifications with my lathe, and convert it into a half inch impact driver. Stay tuned. To start out, I want to thank Man Caver Tools for coming up with this idea. A link to his video will be listed in the description below. You'll need a T15 Torx to remove the clip and the bit holder, and a T10 Torx to remove the screws that hold the two halves of the clamshell together, as well as the four screws on the back cap. Separate the two halves and lift out the gear case assembly. This is all that you need to work with. Carefully tap on the front of the quarter inch hex anvil, remove the plastic end cap assembly while noting the position of the beveled edge and keep this to the side. Then slip out the impacting assembly. The anvil that's used for the conversion comes from an M12 half inch impact wrench. To remove the quarter inch hex anvil, there's a retaining ring that needs to come off first. I use two picks to open the retaining ring enough to remove it. Next I remove the spring that keeps the steel balls in place and push the quarter inch hex anvil through. After a quick wipe down and attempt not to lose my balls, I pulled the measurement from the original quarter inch hex anvil of 590 thousandths. Next I took a measurement of the half inch anvil which measured 661 thousandths. Hold up, what was that? Hey guys, it's me from the future and I just wanted to interrupt this video to tell you that as of right now, I don't really recommend using the ball detent anvil. This detent has way too sharp of an edge and it's a little too hard to overcome with most sockets to get them on and off unless the sockets have that little bit of a bevel or a leading edge on the opening. Instead, I recommend getting the friction ring anvil. I'll put the part number to it right here up on the screen. It has the same dimensions, but the friction ring will allow you to get the sockets on and off a lot easier. Did you guys hear something? Anyway, I bought a 3 8 anvil to see if I could do a 3 8 conversion, but sadly the anvil is smaller than the original quarter inch hex anvil. Using a telescoping bore gauge, I measured the original bore size to be 591 thousandths, which if you subtract the 590 thousandths of the quarter inch hex anvil, you get one thousandth of clearance. The next step was to bring it over to the lathe and chuck it up enough to hold it, but not so much that I deform it. So when you take the 661 thousandths and add a thou for clearance, you get a final bore size of 662 thousandths. Which would mean that I need to take off 71 thou in total. To give myself kind of a point of reference, I set my bore gauge to the final dimension of 662 thou so that I could tell when I was getting close to my measurement. My lathe isn't super accurate, so you can't always rely on the numbers marked on the dials. I could tell before I even started cutting that the insert and the snout of the gear case assembly was a sintered bronze bushing, but as soon as I started cutting, my suspicions were confirmed. Bronze will leave very granular chips when you turn it on the lathe. I repeated the process a few times and snuck up on my final dimension, checking with my bore gauge as I went. A little finger action, and in it goes. I deburred the inside with my Noga deburring tool and wiped out any remaining chips. After one last test fit, I decided to chuck it back up in the lathe and take off another three thousandths. 
The anvil just seemed a little tight where the rubber o-ring was riding and I was worried that there would be too much drag. Milwaukee calls for their own proprietary Type A grease, but after looking up the specs, it's an NLGI2 grease, which is exactly what Superlube is. I made sure to grease the white plastic ring that the anvil rides on, along with the bronze bushing and the snout. I also greased the walls of the gear case and all of the contact surfaces on the new anvil. I put in the new anvil and made sure that I was happy with the way it spun. I dropped in the impacting assembly and made sure that everything was heated correctly and meshed the way that it should. The inside of the case has notches that need to be aligned with the tabs on the outside of the ring gear. The plastic end cap assembly needs to have the beveled side lined up with the notch on the gear case. A few light taps is all that it needs to seat the end cap. Next, drop in the gear case assembly, making sure to put the tabs on the gear case where they belong in the clamshell to lock it in place. Take the other Ah, sneaky sneaky. Take the other half of the clamshell, snap it in place, and then reinstall all of the screws that you previously uninstalled. Simple as that. Once again, I'd like to thank Man Caver Tools for the idea. Links to his video and a video done by Torque Test Channel will be listed in the description along with a list of the different anvils and their part numbers. Thank you all for watching, and now it's time to move on to the next project.